Imagine you hire a lawyer just to have them later sue you? That's what's happening to New York's Mark Perez. His lawyer, Benedict Morelli, is suing him for a bigger slice of a settlement. He was already paid over $18 million for his work on the case, and now he wants another $5.5 million. Back in 2013, Mark Perez was seriously injured in a workplace accident and hired Morelli as his lawyer to sue Live Nation. He agreed to pay Morelli a third of the settlement as a continuation contingency fee. The court initially awarded Perez over $100 million, but when Live Nation appealed, Morelli wanted a higher percentage to carry on. No agreement was ever signed, but when the lawsuit was finally settled for $55 million, Morelli took his 18 mil and is now suing for that bigger piece of the pie. What do you think? Is the lawyer greedy, or is he just trying to get what he earned? Comment below and follow us for more daily headlines. Sanctions against Russia are now affecting the country's billionaires. America, the European Union, and other allies are looking to seize and freeze Russian assets. And some of the country's oligarchs are scrambling to get their super yachts to safe ports. At least four massive yachts are reportedly en route to Montenegro and the Maldives, where the extradition treaties are limited. Alisher Uzmanov, Russia's sixth richest man, was too slow to react. His $600 million superyacht was seized in Hamburg. That's a pretty good snag by the German government, too. It's reportedly the world's biggest superyacht by volume. And France just seized the $120 million superyacht owned by Russian oligarch and Putin confidant Igor Sechin. Do you think hitting Russia's uber rich where it hurts is an effective tactic? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. People are showing their support for people in Ukraine by booking Airbnbs there. In the past few days, tens of thousands of stays have been booked in Ukraine Airbnbs by people worldwide who have no intention of going there. It's just that it's one of the fastest and easiest ways to get money straight to Ukrainians. Millions of dollars worth have been booked so far. And once Airbnb realized that's what was happening, it canceled all the fees for the bookings. On top of that, the platform's nonprofit arm is offering free short-term housing for up to 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. So do you think direct help like this is better than donating through a charity? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. President Joe Biden has signed a massive $1.5 trillion spending bill. And if you're wondering where all that hard-earned tax money is going besides just funding the government, listen up. The military is getting a massive chunk, $782 billion worth. That includes cash for new fighter planes, ships, tanks, and pay increases for troops. Foreign aid for humanitarian, military, and economic programs are getting about $50 billion, with almost $14 billion of that going to emergency aid for Ukraine. And community projects across the U.S. will also get billions. Think infrastructure, water quality improvements, hospitals, school upgrades, and so on. Is all this worth going further into debt, or is U.S. spending on the right track? Comment below, and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The world is certainly losing its taste for Russian vodka. America has banned the import of Russian alcohol, and boycotts are picking up steam all over the globe. Two of Australia's biggest liquor chains have removed all their Russian products, and a New Zealand chain topped that, pulling thousands of vodka bottles off its shelves and filling the empty space with Ukrainian flags. Even one of Russia's neighbors has gotten on board. Finland's liquor stores have stopped selling 20 kinds of Russian vodka, and a lobby group for its hospitality industry is encouraging bars and restaurants to do the same. This comes as Finland is also reportedly considering NATO membership. If you support the banning of Russian products around the world, then comment below and make sure you're following the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. January 6th rioter Guy Reffitt has been found guilty on all charges. Reffitt is the first of the rioters to go to trial rather than accept a plea deal with prosecutors. And it took the jury less than four hours to reach their verdict. The evidence was pretty solid, including surveillance video, text messages, testimony from Capitol Police officers and witnesses, and even Reffitt's own son taking the stand against him. 
His defense attorney tried to portray Reffitt as a blowhard who was all talk and no action, but clearly couldn't convince the jury. He was convicted on all the five charges he faced. The two most serious ones, obstruction of Congress and obstruction of justice, could each get him up to 20 years in prison. Does this sound like a reasonable penalty for trying to overthrow an elected government? Or should the really big sentences be reserved for the top organizers? Comment below and keep following the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. It turns out even Star Wars fans have limits on how far they'll go to express their love for the franchise. That includes shelling out huge money for Disney's new Star Wars themed Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. It opened on March 1st and the majority of their 100 rooms remain available right through to the end of the year. And here's why. Room costs are going for between $5,000 and $20,000 for a two night stay. What? And that's not even all inclusive. Beer and booze runs from $13 to $23 bucks. And of course, any extras will also rack up the bill. I got a bad feeling about this. Disney World is facing some pretty serious backlash from fans online over the sky-high room rates, food costs, and other Star Wars-themed extras. I felt a great disturbance in the Force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror. Would you pay that kind of money to holiday roleplay with your favorite fandom? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Like a bantha. Yes. Spring break is in full party mode this year. After two years of COVID cancellations, the rowdy beach parties are back in both Florida and Texas. Over a million crazy college kids are expected to flock to both states during the month of March, with hotels in Miami Beach and South Padre Island booked solid. Miami Beach Mayor Dan Galber says his city feels a bit overwhelmed, but he can't blame students for letting loose after sitting at home or in their dorm rooms and apartments for the last two years. Are you one to join the party, or are you staying far away? Comment below, be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. An ex-Apple employee has been charged in a multi-million dollar fraud. Direndra Prasad was a buyer and is now facing charges for wire and mail fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion after allegedly ripping off Apple for over $10 million. According to prosecutors, Prasad took kickbacks, made Apple pay for things it never received, and even stole parts using false repair orders. And like all the smartest criminals who eventually get caught, he laundered the proceeds and never declared the income. The IRS won't let you buy anything of value with it. Prasad faces maximum sentences of 5 to 20 years on each of the charges and has already had 5 million in property and bank accounts seized by the feds. What do you think a fair sentence would be for a crime like this? Comment below and be sure to keep watching the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. We all know microplastic pollution is a growing environmental problem, but in a shocking new study, it's now found its way into our bloodstream. In the study published in the journal Environment International, 77% of blood samples taken from random participants had tiny plastic particles in them. Oh! While it's been known for a while that we've been consuming these microplastics, given all the waste and the environment, the fact they're now in our blood is a major cause for concern. It means that they're now traveling around our bodies, able to reach all our organs. And the problem isn't going away anytime soon. We currently produce about 300 million tons of plastic waste every single year, and it's expected that plastic production is going to double by 2040. Does knowing this make you take pollution more seriously? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. A gang of sledgehammer-wielding burglars pulled off a wild daytime smash and grab at a Beverly Hills jewelry store. It took only 30 seconds, but the thieves haul was reportedly in the $5 million range. The robbery was captured on multiple videos, and although they wore hoodies and masks, they reportedly left behind some pretty serious evidence. As in, the stolen car they used, and a cell phone. These smash and grab burglaries are on the rise and many people think it's because the thieves face few true consequences. 
Have we become too soft on crime? Comment below and make sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. If you care about what goes into your body, listen up. Alarming levels of dangerous chemicals have been found in food packaging that's used by major fast food restaurants and grocery chains. The chemicals, known as PFAs, are common in packaging and help block moisture and oils from soaking through wrappers. But the Centers for Disease Control considers them to be a public health concern, citing evidence that exposure could damage our immune system and reduce our resistance to infectious diseases. According to the investigation by Consumer Reports, more than 100 food products from 24 well-known fast food and grocery store chains were tested. The highest levels were found in wrappers from Nathan's Famous, Kava, Arby's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Stop and Shop, and Sweetgreen. Well, knowing there are dangerous chemicals in certain companies' food wrappers change where you get your takeouts? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. You might soon be able to subscribe to your iPhone. Reports say Apple will be launching a subscription plan for new hardware. Basically, that means instead of buying an iPhone or iPad, users would pay a monthly fee to have one. It would all be linked to your Apple ID and work pretty much like a typical subscription service like, say, Netflix. The subscription fees are expected to vary, with different tiers getting different perks. So a lower tier might be eligible for an older model of iPhone, but a higher tier could potentially get the newest releases. Apple hasn't revealed details on the plan, but reports say it could launch later this year. Do you think you might want to subscribe to your iPhone instead of owning it? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The crackdown on Russian oligarchs continues. The UK just seized an incredible $50 million super yacht. Known as the Phi, the 192 foot long ship features a swimming pool and a wine cellar. It's currently docked at London's Canary Wharf and won't be going anywhere anytime soon. The UK government has not revealed which Russian businessman owns it. We have held this ship, uh, which we now know uh, belongs to a Russian oligarch, uh, because we're very clear that we cannot have any benefit to these oligarchs with close connections to Putin uh, whilst that terrible war is going on in Ukraine and so many people are suffering. Meanwhile, the Dominican Republic has stopped another massive yacht from leaving port at the request of the US government. The $455 million Flying Fox yacht is apparently linked to Russian oligarch Dmitry Kamenshik. Would you like to see even more of these oligarchs' assets seized? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines.